gonna top her off. I like to pull furnishings and eyebrows and get this stuff started getting ready before I pull the coats down. This takes about three months to bring into a full coat if she's been neglected like this one. So I'll work on it every two or three weeks and then I'll strip her coat down in a month. So, I have to think back that in 12 weeks, how long is this going to be and how short can I take it and still have recovery. I like to take it down short and think that I can take her into the ring in two or three weeks. I never take their beards all the way down. I divide the top of the nose off from the side of the nose, even though eventually I want it all to blend in. I do the same thing that I do with the legs. I make it a square, think of it as a square or a brick. You can see lumps and bumps right here, thin that out some. Take off by the eye. That's going to help set your length of eyebrow and the pad of the muzzle is where you want your beard to grow from, not all the way back to the eye. It's the whisker area on a dog that doesn't have whiskers like a uh, Labrador or something. This is called the pad of the muzzle of the cheek and it has hard whiskers in there as well as soft ones. That's where your hair will grow from. The rest of it is shaping. When I come to the top of the nose, I want to make sure my planes all come out one level piece comb this all up to the middle of the eyebrow and you can see I have some long stuff right here. I'm going to take this off, not too much. Anywhere where there is bone, like on the muzzle, that's going to be the very slowest hair to recuperate, to grow. Hair needs a good blood supply to grow. When you don't have a good blood supply and you've got a lot of bone, it's going to grow slower. Halo. Comb it up. And you kind of squint at it. I don't know if you can see it in the video. But if you squint at it, you'll see thicker hair down here and taller hair up here. You just want to pull the very longest ones. Always combing and assessing where you're going, what you're doing, how much. Most breed standards called for a well-filled eye, so you want to take this out now so that come show time, this has grown back thick and presents the illusion of a very well filled eye. In her case, it's not so much illusion because she does have nice fill under her eye. These ears here are long. You can see them. You want them all to blend. 
at the top of her nose. When I comb it down, all this long stuff here doesn't belong to you. You want to come from the corner of the eye to the end of the nostril, with the hair being pretty much the same length. worked her face down now. Now I'm going to divide her eyebrows out. We talked about this along the muzzle to the corner of the eye. We're going to go right up into the eyebrow. The eyebrow should be a triangle. Don't you see? Don't you see? Should come from the corner of the eye straight back to the brow bone and over. And that's where you get this triangle. You need to work back. The shorter hair is going to be here, the longer hair is here, because you're going to build this to look like a flat brick. So I've got a big patch right here in front of the eye. I'm going to take this out. You want them to be able to see. See, I can see now, and I'm going to go back this way, divide out the eyebrow, mark it out, straight line through here. I'm going to go to the back of the eye, at the brow bone, which is right here. I'm right on her brow bone. And straight over. And that's going to make our nice little eyebrow. Remember that a fox terrier is not a schnauzer, it is not a scotty. It should blend all the way in with a smooth look. Almost indiscernible. You don't want to see dividing lines. You just want it to blend nice get your length if you take and twist your eyebrow. Oh, this fly is being nasty. Excuse me for a minute. Well, I get why. Let's see if I want to go off. Yard guard. and I twist and then I pull just from the very tip point to set my length. And again, this is all blended in. It is not um, just all one length. It's just as blended with different layers as the rest of the face and the rest of the body. You can see how much neater this brow is than the one next to it. That's it. Find your side. Again, I've got heavy corners. I don't want heavy corners. You don't want the eyebrow to fall outside of your cheek area. Stay. Let that stay. This is the top of her head, and I'm blending it in. What knife would you use to blend in? I'm using my Fine Classic because that's what I use a lot of. 
how your equipment works in your hand is strictly up to you. Some people say the length of the tooth on the knife determines how long the hair left here is. That's only partially true. It depends on how heavy handed or light handed you are. And you can see I'm doing a lot of finger pulling and picking. Just gently right between the eyes. Now, when you have a dog, and every dog has cheekbones and brow bones, the shorter you take the hair, the more obvious those bones are going to be. I sat in church today and could have done a lump counting on the guy in front of me because his head was shaved. Would you stop it? And um, so, like I said, the more hair you take off, the more you're going to expose. And this is where your artistic interpretation is going to come in to a great extent. You want this to be flat. And if you see a slight lump in there, identify it, pull a little bit, comb. Why are you being a butt? She says she's hot. Got too much right here. Now flat work should be done every single week. Flat work is not the top of the head. This is flat work. Throat is flat work. Ears are flat work. This is part of coat. The top of the head has coat on it. So you do not want the top of the head to be totally flat. This has to blend into your flat work. It's supposed to go from the corner of the eye down to the corner of the mouth. Depending on your dog's shape, it will depend on whether you want it to be a straight line, an angled line, or a curved line. Most dogs have a big hollow in here, and you can see that right here, and here's the, the cheek. This is what you want to have flat, right here on the cheek that is where their bone is. Underneath here, you want it somewhat flat, but not as flat. You want it to have time to grow and fill in so that it's all one length when it's show time. But generally from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. Right. And at the point in time when you're ready to say, I'm going to a show, that'll be six to eight weeks before you're going to strip the body out. No longer than eight weeks prior to a show. And as you're working your body coat out, the head hair is also going to be growing. So you're going to be sculpting this back. get to pull the eyelashes, those beautiful little black things. Pull them about two weeks before a show, maybe ten days before a show, they will start to come back, poking through the eyelid, leaving beautiful black eyeliner. 
which is all you want to see of them. They tend to grow out and up, and they'll hold the eyebrow up. And it's hard for you to get your eyebrow to comb down. Try for a nice flat look. Now, if you do your flat work every week, when the new hair comes in, it's bright red and it's beautiful. And at the end of six to eight weeks of doing this flat work every single week, you will have a thick, plush covering. You don't have to pull it like these ears to pink every single time. You just want to top it off short, keep it short and you will see it blend slowly. This hollow spot in here that we talked about, that's another spot. And you can take it short now because you've got eight weeks for it to recuperate in. But ultimately you want it all to blend in so you have a nice smooth look. Same thing under your throat. Every wire grows this line at the lip that's black and it grows out and sticks out and distorts the beard. Then the beard won't fall down, it'll fall over the top of it. So you want to get rid of this right here on the bottom lip. Nice thin line. See how that's all turning down now. Now the beard can fall down over the top of it. Okay? It's not going to poke up. You can see the edges of your beard. Be careful that you don't get carried away and come from this little canine tooth that makes that mark there underneath here. No, you want to angle it back. You want to pull this off and then angle it back so that this is filled in underneath here with nice thick hair becomes part of the beard constantly brushing it forward into a beard you can see how black this side is and how it's poking out and how it, want, it would just keep growing and keep poking my beard up and out but we're going to take it all off we're going to keep it off right to there and then I angle it back. If you were to look underneath, it would be back to where there's a mole that grows under there. And that's about where you want to take it back to so that all that other hair can grow forward and give you your length of beard. This beard is long right here. We're gonna pull it off. Now, if you've got a beard that's really, really long and you, you can't pull some like this and you need lots of time, give yourself about three months before a show and pull all your furnishings down pretty hard, including your beard and your eyebrows. Um, pulling them down hard. In three months' time, you should have enough beard. You don't want to pull this part here over the peach, over the... Um, whisker patches too much. All this other stuff can come off. Especially if your dog has good bone, good fill. I'm going to take a detail knife now and sculpt around these eyebrow, eye, yeah, my eyebrows. I'm going over the brow bone pretty good but I'm not going to make it naked. 